Twenty-three-year-old Torsen covers his face and constantly sobs during his conversation with the reporter. He becomes especially excited when he recalls his experience of leaving home to attend high school in another part of China. He was just one of six students from his area admitted to the school. It was my first time on a train. I'd never been on a train before. We passed so many cities. When we arrived, we got off the train. There were beautiful places, the like of which we'd never seen before. We got to our school. It was amazing inside. Our dormitory was nicer than the ones for the local students. There was an air conditioner. Four of us shared one room. The tables, chairs, and beds were all very clean. The food was all Muslim. In his first year at high school, his English was very poor, but in the pleasant studying environment and through a lot of hard work, he managed to pass the college English test six in the second semester of his second year. An English composition he wrote about campus life was chosen by his teacher as a model essay. It's a fun memory, which he shares with the reporter in English. I put, I put my emotion into this、uh, composition.、Uh, after, uh, after that, my oral teacher let me read this、uh, composition. After I, re- I read,、uh, he. He he is very happy after that,、uh, and, and then、uh, asked me to study study hard、uh, because he said I have some talent in English in English, so I also very happy. However, Tursun fared poorly in the all important college entrance examination. He decided to go back home to Hetian in Xinjiang to repeat the last year of high school. His plan was to try again to get to college the following year. My first goal was Xinjiang Medical University, or somewhere like Guangdong Province. A medical university with a high standard of teaching, and go and study there. One day, he was approached by a man named Mahmud, who was posing as a religious teacher. What Tursun didn't know was that Mahmud was in fact a construction worker who hadn't even completed a primary school education. He told me I shouldn't go to a secular school. He said college graduates were breaking with Islam. They were of no use to society or to Islam. So I shouldn't go to a college that wasn't Muslim. With time, Mahmud and his group reviewed their real purpose. Mahmud Abura once told me that anyone who made contact with him but refused to join the Hijrat. Was not a true Muslim. Aware of Mahmud's real purpose, Torsen declared his intention to quit the group. They wanted me to go to Malaysia, then Turkey, from there to Afghanistan, Iraq, or Syria, to join the jihad. I said I wouldn't, but nor would I tell anyone about it. They pointed two swords at me. They said, "Now you know about our mission. You can't just walk away. Do as we say, otherwise we'll dump your body somewhere. Your parents will never find it." Under threat, Tursun gave Mahmud the thirty thousand yuan his parents had given him for his college fees. Even though his marks in the college entrance exam were well above what was required to gain entry to one of the country's leading universities, he cancelled his application for college and prepared to leave the country. 
The first time his parents knew the son they'd been so proud of hadn't ever been to college was when he was repatriated to China. I often dream of my mother waiting for me outside our home, crying. In the dream, she'd say, son, keep warm. She'd follow me, carry my clothes. I also dream of her crying her eyes out, worrying about me. While overseas, he was only allowed out at night and live in a state of fear. Because of his English ability, he was put in charge of the group's external liaison. Through his work, he learned a number of secrets that left him even more terrified. In June 2014, I met a man who left Xinjiang 19 years before, but regretted joining the jihad and wanted to go home. I met him in Malaysia. He told me this in tears. Every day there are people escaping from ISIL, Syria and Afghanistan. A man who traveled with me to Guangzhou from Urumqi was killed by a bomb dropped by a US drone soon after arriving in Syria. He left behind a wife and children who can now barely scrape by. I also heard about many people who just disappeared or were taken away.